All right, so, you know, Dinah, one of the really cool things about being a, a baby boomer age, I think we have enough self-confidence and generally enough spare change to pay someone else to take care of things we could be doing ourselves. Ah, you either take it out of your pocket or you take it out of your back, right? Or borrow it. What's the difference, <laughs> you know? But te you know, technology is moving so rapidly that even if we knew what we were doing, it can be difficult to really know for sure. And I think this is especially true with cars, which oh. I am absolutely intimidated by. Now, time was, when we were growing up at least, you, you, you could look under the hood and you could at least figure out what part did what. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, of course, that might not be the case. Taking care of one of our biggest investments outside of the home should be a top priority, though. And believe it or not, even us relatively old folks can do some basic things that will ensure our cars keep running. Now, with Arctic air blasting us from the north or, or, or even with normal winter-like weather conditions, our cars... Uh, take a beating on the inside and the outside. Here to talk about how to maybe remedy this just a little bit with a few tips, perhaps, on how we can do some of these things ourselves is Pam Oaks. We've had her on before. She's great fun. Pam is an ASE certified technician since 1995. She holds a degree in electronic engineering technology. She's repaired tens of thousands of vehicles, has a website called Car Care for the Clueless, which I love. Uh, it is a fourth-generation automotive technician. She's also really tired of hearing the Mona Lisa Vito comparisons. So I won't go there, Pam, but, uh, hey, welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you. No, actually, it's going to have my father and uncle teach me car repair. And have my, uh, I was fortunate enough to have my great-grandfather. Yeah. Again. What, so, what, what, yeah. Did, what did, what's your great -grand You're not that old. What did your great-grandfather work on? I mean, what, what was this, in the 40s or 30s? What was yeah. this? No, actually... He was following his father's footsteps. Wow. Uh, his father was the sheriff of Oakland County, Michigan, which is like Pontiac now. And right. He knows it like Pontiac. And uh, he was on the Detroit PD, walk to beat. My great-grandmother says, provisions coming up. We know it's going to be nasty in Detroit because of Windsor. Right. And I watch out for force. So he started up at a hauptmobile. That was his introduction to the automotive world. Wow. And he opened his own shop. And... Crazy as it sounds, the people my great grandmother wanted to keep him away from, who's <laughs> actually working on their cars, like the purple guy and all that. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Okay, okay. Well, that was that might have been all right, but so you were you were born to do this, in other words. Yes, yeah, I, yeah. I, well, I really enjoyed hanging out with them. Well, that's good. Now we got a lot. Of, we got a lot of listeners and viewers who live uh, right, kind of in the sweet spot where this cold weather snap hit. Talk first, if you would, just about what kind of damage that might have done to their cars. Well, wow. you know, if you don't do maintenance, and I want to say, talk about maintenance, and I, did I say maintenance? Please. Yeah. <laughs> we do our maintenance. Yes. It's so important for the longevity of your car. And people don't realize that, you know, they're driving transportation. They're thinking, how am I going to get to school? How am I going to get to work? That's great. But you're actually driving an investment. This is your trade-in dollars when it's time to upgrade to a newer used car or a new car. You want this thing looking great, and maintenance, you need it running great, too, because maintenance, taking care of the oil changes when needed, uh, if you hear a little noise, you hear a little rattle that you're not used to, uh, you smell a funny smell, immediately go over and see your established ASC Blue Seal Shopper dealership. You want to address this right away, because when you do, it's pennies to repair mm -hmm. versus hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to repair. So, uh, Pam, give us some idea. I think a lot of people that are in the boomer generation were sort of left behind because technology kicked in. I mean, I drove a little 73 Pinto, and that was like repairing a, a lawnmower. But, uh, uh, you know, certainly when technology came in, it kind of threw us all for a loop. So are there some easy tips that people can do in the colder months to make sure their cars run smoothly and not encounter these problems? Definitely. And, you know, we don't want you to fix your vehicle in the driveway. That's 25, 35 years ago. Yeah. What we need the consumer to do is learn how to have their car repaired properly by an ASC certified technician or at the dealership, you know, one or the other, the Blue Seal shop at the dealership. And I always tell everybody, especially during the winter months, go once a month, go over to your shop, your established shop that you've been working with, have them top the fluid levels off, have them put air in the tires, have them check the tire tread. You want all this checked over 
You're having a professional set of eyes looking at your vehicle, and that's your uncle who used to do this 20 years ago is <laughs> trying to help you out. You don't yeah. want that. Or your, or, or your, or your neighbor. Yeah. Oh, okay, so following up on that, this has nothing to do with cold weather, but it, I think it needs to be asked for a large segment of our audience. How does someone of the older generation know that their mechanic isn't somehow, you know, taking advantage of them? Like, especially women, I, I think. How can people sort of protect themselves? What do they look for in a mechanic? Well, you know, they have to be able to explain it to you in layman's terms that you understand. I do a ton of show and tell at my shop the last 19 plus years. I really show what's going on versus what could happen to their car, and I never, ever, never, ever use scare tactics. That's a flag right there, huge red mm -hmm. flag. Um, another thing is you can always double-check your tech by getting a second opinion at a very reputable shop, not one of these, you know, tire box stores or anything like that, but somewhere that has a fabulous reputation in the community, and they have ASC certified techs. There's no harm in getting a second opinion. Don't feel funny about it. And if your tech's right on, great, you yeah. know. But if there's something uh, not too kosher about it, you're going to find out then, and you're going to keep money in your wallet. Yeah, I, so, I, I, I've heard some of these guys say, well, you know, I really, I, I'm scared to let you drive out of here with this thing. So, you know, why don't we just take care of it right now? Write me a check for 500 bucks, and we'll have it done. Uh, that's somebody you should probably run away from, huh? Exactly. And the other thing, too is when you go into the shop and you have an issue and say, well, you know, I probably spent $200. Never, ever do that. Really? Never, ever. Because I can guarantee you, in most cases, 99.9%, .9%, you're going to be spending $200 on whatever. Hmm. Never tell them your budget. You know your budget. Yeah, it's, and yeah, it's, they know cars. You know, that makes sense. And it, it, It's like going to the car sales. How much do you want to spend on this? Yeah. You know, well, here's what I got. Okay. Uh, Pam Oaks, uh, we're out of time. CarCareForTheClueless.com is your website. What can people find there? Uh, we have an interactive forum. We have free car care guide. We have free storm guide. Right now we're talking about blizzards on the front page and how you can protect you and your investment. Great. Uh, Pam Oaks, I appreciate you being with us. We'll have you on again. Take care. Thank you. Uh, you bet. All right. Car care for the I was actually I was on that site and and that's me. I mean, there, I I I I like to think I know a lot about it, a lot of things. <laughs> Cars they 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 scare me. You ever look I under know. the hood? Oh. The best I can do, look under the hood and frown. Yeah, or stand back like this. Yeah, yeah. You kind of yeah put your yeah yeah yeah, yeah the yeah, the hand right? on the chin. Oh, and I thought I look. had it. I thought I had a, a clue until I bought the new car. It's all smooth. Now the '73 Pinto, maybe. Yeah. But nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll talk about stuff we do know again, which is finance with Professor Plum when we come back on the Boomer's Brain Trust. Do not go away. We're talking about what's important to you, your money, your business, your life. This is Boomer's Brain Trust. The views and opinions expressed on the show are not necessarily those of this station or its sponsors and should not be considered as legal tax or investment advice. You should always consult with the appropriate advisors before making any financial decision.